In this video, I'll be demonstrating a left sacral iliac joint fusion utilizing a single implant. Here, I am palpating the posterior superior iliac spine to determine the safe starting point for our initial pin placement. We use a line that intersects the mid-axis of the femur and a line intersecting the axis of the PSIS and then divide this line into thirds and the typical starting point is at the intersection of the posterior third and the middle third between this grid. This is often a safe starting point to prevent going in the greater sciatic notch or cranial to the iliac crest. We then take the smaller of the K-wires and insert this into the safe starting point grid. We use the smaller guide pin to help preventing any damage to the surrounding soft tissues. Utilizing inlet and outlet fluoroscopy, we are able to obtain a near perfect starting point with this smaller pin. You'll see me adjusting the pin placement based on the trajectory of the inlet view, but utilizing the outlet view. This ensures a uniplanar change in pin placement. Here we are checking the inlet view, and our adjustments will now be directly in line with the outlet view. It is important to remember that adjustments on the inlet view are in the anterior and posterior plane, and adjustments on the outlet view are on the cranial and caudal plane. Once I have the starting point in the ideal position, I make a small incision directly below the initial pin and place the 3.2 millimeter guide pin right to the tip of the initial smaller K-wire. I fine tune this on the inlet and outlet image until the starting point is in the perfect location. We are checking sequential x-rays to fine tune the pin placement. I usually take a mallet and tap this into the periosteum to prevent skiving when placing the pin into the sacral ala with the drill. A mental crutch can be utilized here to aim the drill in the opposite trajectory so that the pin is only doing a uniplanar correction. The guide pin at this point is oscillated and fine-tuned as we enter across the safe zone of the corresponding sacral segment into the vertebral body of the corresponding sacral segment. Here we are fine-tuning on oscillate to optimize our trajectory to avoid injury to the neurovascular structures. Namely, this would be L5 or S1 as detailed here. I now change to the inlet view to verify placement on the anterior posterior plane, and we have safe placement as shown here in these inlet images. I also double check a lateral view to make sure that we are posterior to the iliac cortical density. In cases where the anatomy may be confusing or there is a significantly dysmorphic sacrum, the lateral view can be used liberally at the start of the case to verify safe pin placement. Once the pin is in excellent position, I then utilize an 11 blade staying right on the guide pin and take the fascial incision down to the lateral table of the iliac wing. 
I don't perform any type of incision, only that uh, through the fascia. I then use my finger to help alleviate some of the fascial tension around the pin to make room for the dilators. Once the final working cannula is inserted, I then mount this into the lateral ileal wall to ensure that it stays in the correct position through the entire case. It helps to be in plane with the guide to help prevent skiving. Because of the slope of the iliac wing at this level, it is oftentimes helpful to ensure the guide pin is in the center of the guide, so I will tap the working portal just a bit to help ensure that the guide pin is in the center of the working cannula. I place two stabilization pins through the working cannula just into the outer table of the ilium to help prevent any movement and ensure safety through the remainder of the procedure. At this point, we measure the appropriate length of the selected implant. This is either a 12 or 10 millimeter screw based on the distance of the safe zone. The safe zone is determined on your preoperative templating from the CT scan and plane films. When measuring, I try not to go across the midline in case the patient returns for bilateral SI joint fusions in the future. At this point, the working sleeve is threaded in. The depth is not important here, just seat it in relatively far. We then take the 7.5 millimeter drill for the 12 millimeter implant and drill this in utilizing fluoroscopy to ensure the pin is not advancing. You can oftentimes feel the SI joint at this stage to verify that you have good tactile feedback when placing the drill across. There is some bone graft in these threads which can be utilized for auto grafting. We then take the 12 millimeter drill and insert this through the lateral wall of the ilium to the SI joint. I use fluoroscopy liberally at this point to verify that the depth is correct at the level of the SI joint. You'll see me stop and we verify fluoroscopy that we are on the ileal side of the SI joint as shown here. The next stage is to go just across the SI joint and we set the depth at this point on the working sleeve so that the decortication level is directly at the level of the SI joint. When utilizing a drill, this is to the level of the laser line. You can see here that we are just across the SI joint, which shows we are at the exact level where we'd like to aggressively decorticate the SI joint. When the drill comes out, this is the stage where we have bone graft collected within the deep flutes of the drill, which are designed to collect bone graft. This is added to our slurry of bone graft material and extenders on the back table. The pin is then removed, and this is the time for decortication. There is a slit at the end of the decorticating tool to verify that you are where you would like to be in the level of the SI joint. This is shown in the next fluoroscopic image. The guide has the blade angle written on it and you make sure that that is placed perpendicular to the beam so that you can see the cutout and your blade. As you progressively rotate the instrument, you deploy the decorticating blade with the rotating handle on the end of the insertion handle. As you go back and forth, you'll check inlet and outlet fluoroscopy to demonstrate the blade aggressively decorticating the SI joint, both cranially and caudally.
The benefit of the working sleeve is that you can go in a few millimeters or out a few millimeters to increase the width or depth of your SI fusion zone. Where I'm pointing here demonstrates the level of deployment of your blade that can be based on preoperative templating if you don't wish to have the full 38 millimeter deployment. In some cases with dysmorphic sacrum, these measurements are critically important. Once you have finished with the decortication, we aggressively irrigate out the fusion zone with our removal instrument and suction device. The hole at the end of the suction guide can be irrigated so that we irrigate directly out the end of the irrigation tube. Oftentimes intraoperative fluoroscopy to demonstrate a lucency at that level from the removed bone and cartilage. Once the irrigation is complete, we inject a bone graft mixture, which consists of the patient's autograft harvested from the drills and a bone graft extender of choice from the surgeon. Oftentimes, intraoperative fluoroscopy to demonstrate that lucency turn into an opaque mixture from the bone graft injection. Once the bone graft has been injected, we then place the initial centralizing cannula back in place, followed by the 3.2 millimeter guide pin. If there is any resistance in placing the guide pin, intraoperative imaging should be evaluated to ensure that no trajectory has changed. You can utilize inlet and outlet views to verify this. The working sleeve is then removed. The inner sleeve is then removed as well as the stabilization pins. The final implant is then selected. You can see that the fenestrations in the screw have been filled in with autograft material to enhance the fusion through the implant. I utilize my finger around the washer to verify we are not entrapping any of the gluteal fascia or muscle underneath the washer as it seats directly on the lateral wall of the ilium. We then do final tightening with hand to verify that we do not strip the implant or intrude the lateral wall of the ilium. I verify screw placement and compression utilizing an AP view with an approximately 30 degree rollback to look down the outer table of the ilium. You can see that demonstrated here. I consistently do this utilizing fluoroscopy on every case. Utilizing this view, I'm able to fine tune the instrument to maximize compression. I feel that compression is optimized with purchase into the vertebral body of the corresponding sacral segment where bone quality is significant and you can see some gentle compression across the SI joint and ilium on those fluoroscopic images. Finally, we irrigate out the surgical site with two bulbs of normal saline to help prevent any heterotopic ossification forming from the reamings from the drills. After irrigation, we inject local anesthetic around the periosteum from the implant and the corresponding soft tissues to help with perioperative pain control. We close the incision in two layers, utilizing a 3-O absorbable stitch. We sew continuously down to the 
caudal aspect of the incision and then perform a closing subcuticular stitch which results in a very cosmetically pleasing incision as seen here. We then utilize a waterproof dressing and cover this with gauze and tape. Patients with single-sided SI joint fusion surgery utilizing this method are typically weight bearing is tolerated utilizing crutches for seven to 10 days post-operatively. They come back for a wound check at three weeks post-operatively and new x-rays at six weeks. Thank you for watching.